That brings me to my first question as far as application process is concerned. Like if in case I do decide uh, to apply for roads, uh, what are the basics of application process and what was your strategy? Uh, and this would include everything, the LORs, SOPs and everything. Uh, we talk about application process. What was your strategy when you approached application process? Yeah. So let me preface this by saying that I did the whole process, I think three years ago now. So. Obviously, my memory on the details might have faded a bit, but I have given a talk on the roads process in great detail for about one hour or something um, on the NLS channel. So if anyone who's watching this does want those details, um, I'd recommend they go check that out as well. But in brief, so the process is a three-stage process. Um, you first have a written application, which is your, your LORs, your CV, your statement of purpose. Then you have your first round of interviews, which is more a technical round which focuses on your field. So if you're a lawyer, it's a legal round taken by legal panelists. Um, and then you have a final like interview which is with a panel of 10 to 12 people. And that's more like an HR round where they ask you the more broader roads criteria questions and try to test your general reasoning and intelligence um, rather than specifically your legal knowledge. Um, my, my strategy, I didn't have a strategy, but I think um, to write a statement of purpose that is effective, you really need to think long and hard and reflect on basically why you're doing the law, why you want to study it further, and what you really want to have in your life. I mean, it's the thing with these exercises is they're always artificial. No one has a life that is a perfectly written story that can be knitted together and make a coherent narrative. That's just not how lives work. But I think if you try and think deeply about all the experiences you've had in law school, or even before law school, what you did in school, you'll find that there often are common threads of things that interest you or subjects or causes um, for which you care about. And then the whole process of writing an LOR is, oh, sorry, uh, SOP, is collecting and collating those experiences, finding the common thread that runs through them, and then trying and writing a, a compelling and moving narrative um, in your LOR, sorry, SOP, that brings together all those experiences and justifies why what you want to do next is the correct next step for you. And if you can do that and you can be honest with yourself and you can be honest in this process, you write a good SOP and the person who's reading it will be impressed and you will get shortlisted for the interview. So I think the first step is just, yes, that's reflection and honesty with yourself. And um, once you do that, I think you have a good foundation for the subsequent steps. Um, letters of recommendation aren't really up to you. Um, they're up to the people who are your referees. My only recommendation is that when you're picking referees, don't try and pick people who have established names or you, who you think will impress um, your panelists because that is not their purpose. It doesn't matter if it is the prime minister or president of India who has written your um, LOR if they don't know you. What you need is someone who can actually vouch for your skills, for your abilities, for your um, for the criteria that you have to fulfill to meet the Rhodes Scholarship. Um, and once you do that, it doesn't matter who they are. So select your referees carefully based on the people who've been important for you in life and who've seen you grow and mature as a human being, um, whether in the personal or professional field. And then, yeah, leave it up to them. Don't try and influence them or control them. Send them the criteria. Tell them that this is what you're applying for. Explain the process to them. But beyond that, there's really not that much you can do um, as someone who is trying to get your referees to send in the LORs. Um, that's the first stage. Uh, that is the written application stage. With interviews, it's, it's a whole different ball game. That's life for you, right? You're never going to have a guaranteed win. Um, but what you can do is you can prepare as best as you can and then hope that you manage to not mess it up, um, which is basically what I was doing. Like I was, I was like, I'm, I did everything I could. So I think I was notified about my first interview two weeks before it happened, which isn't a lot of time if you think about it. And this, so you have to be competent in um, general HR questions. You have to have knowledge about all the current affairs, general news that is happening. You need to specifically be aware about um, legal issues that are relevant in that time period in which you're applying. You need to be very competent in the area of law that you have said you want to study further, or if you're not a lawyer, whatever area that you want to study further. Um, and you also need to be able to have a grasp on general HR questions like, what is your biggest weakness? Where do you see yourself in five years? You know, the generic questions they ask in interviews. Like you need to have answers 
somewhat prepared for pretty much all of these lines of reasoning. And that's a huge task to do um, in just two weeks. So what I had was um, I basically drafted this huge timetable, um, which literally broke down each hour slot in those 14 days into me working on one of these, the fields that I just outlined. And I had like notebooks for each of them. So like there was a um, HR questions notebook. There was a general knowledge notebook. There was a legal awareness notebook. There was an international law notebook, which was specifically on researching um, issues in international law. And I would basically like work on each of those things for a certain amount of time each day. The process is never completed. It's never exhaustive. I did as much as I could for each of those things. And then I revised the night before my interview. And that's about it. I think you can do all of this, but it doesn't guarantee you anything. It just guarantees you that you are prepared. Um, but ultimately what matters is how well you use that preparation when you're actually sitting in front of the panelists and trying to answer the questions. And that's really um, just up to how well you can respond on your feet.